Welcome back to section four of chapter one. This section is going to be on continuity. It's a topic we've kind of talked about a little bit. We've mentioned the word continuous at times. And honestly, you've talked about continuous functions in the past. It's a fairly basic concept in the beginning, um, but we're going to get a lot more in depth into this. So the first deal is what is a continuous function? The definition that you probably heard from years and years ago is a continuous a continuous function is a function that you can draw without picking up your pen or pencil and that is still true for the most part there's no breaks in it there's no holes in it there's nothing like that and that's something that we've seen graphically and we've dealt with that a little bit algebraically um, specifically when we're finding limits if the functions continuous we can just plug in the number and we get the limit we don't have to do any of the funny stuff and so what is the definition specifically a function is continuous at x equals c so at a certain point it's continuous if and only if the following happen one the limit itself must exist. Two, the function must exist at that point. And three, the two things have to be equal. So if the limit doesn't exist, that's where you get the function going to a couple different places. That's where you get... Oh, that jumped down there. Um, anyway, it's where you get a jump discontinuity. Looks like that the big break in the graph. If the limit doesn't exist, that happens. It's obviously not continuous. Or you could get the function going to infinity or negative infinity. Not going to be continuous. If f of c doesn't exist, that's where you get a hole in the graph. Not continuous. There's a hole. There's a break in the graph. That's called a removable discontinuity. So the top one's a jump discontinuity. That one's a removable discontinuity. And then they have to equal each other. If they didn't equal each other, that's when you get this deal where you have a hole, but then you have the point somewhere else. That point, when we're finding the limit, that point didn't matter. With continuity, it matters. That point has to be where the limit is. It would have to be right up there to fill in the hole. Um, and so that's the definition of continuous. Again, it's not changing from anything that you've known. However, the definition is important because a lot of times it'll ask you, is it continuous? If not, you have to identify what part of the definition is violated. So jumping down the second box, it showed up um, without me wanting it to. Um, the continuity of a function. A function is continuous either in general or on an interval if it's continuous at every point on that interval or if it's continuous in general it's continuous for all x in the real numbers or for all c in the real numbers um, this is just kind of extending the continuous bit um, it just means it's continuous everywhere there's no weird places um, and the times when you have to look for weird places. Continuous functions, ones that are continuous, again, barring any strangeness. We'll talk about what strangeness could be in a second. Polynomials are continuous. Um, exponential functions are continuous. Um, sines and cosines are continuous. Logs are continuous as long as it's defined. Remember, inside the log, the um, inside the log has to be greater than zero. So the domain is limited, um, but on its domain, it is continuous. Um, and radical functions, when it's defined, that would be square roots, are continuous, as long as you don't have that negative under the root where it isn't defined. Cube roots 
are defined everywhere, so those are always continuous. Um, so those are some examples of functions that are continuous. There are more that are always continuous, um, but these are the common ones, the ones that you know. Um, so where do discon discontinuities happen? It's where weirdness happens, dividing by zero. Um, trig functions other than sine and cosine, um, which really is just dividing by zero. If you think about tangent, tangent is just sine over cosine. And so when cosine equals zero, we're dividing by zero and a discontinuity happens. Um, same with the other three trig functions. And then when the domain changes in a piecewise function, we saw this a little bit last time, um, looking to see if the limit exists. It's possible when the domain changes, the limit doesn't exist, at which point number one is violated because the limit doesn't exist. Um, and so that's times we need to watch out for. Generally speaking, we don't need to watch out in the middle of the domain changes um, because it's usually one of these guys. Um, however, if it's not, if we had somewhere where we could be dividing by zero in the middle of a domain of a piecewise function, that is something that we'd have to watch out for, but that doesn't usually show up like that. So we don't need to worry too much there. Um, so what did I mean by barring any strangeness? Let's say we have the function f of x equals e, but then not to the x, but e to the 1 over x. It's an exponential function, so it's all continuous. But the 1 over x could have a 0 for x. That would be a 0 in a denominator. Weird stuff happens at that point. And so is this continuous or not? We would have to look at it um, if looking at it algebraically is not working out, which in this case, this is a tough one to look at algebraically. You could always graph it. Um, when we graph this one, we get something that looks kind of like this. Um, and so, no, it is not continuous because there is an obvious gap there. Um, and so, that's how we can tell if functions are continuous, just kind of by looking at them. Um, most of what we'll be doing with continuous functions, we'll be looking at piecewise functions. We will be doing two different types of things with piecewise functions. The first of which is, is it continuous or not? The answer is yes or no. However, if it's not continuous, we have to justify it by one of the things being broken. Um, and also having work shown. You can't just write yes or no, that doesn't, doesn't work. Um, and so looking at this, if we have a piecewise function, we need to look to see if it's continuous. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the limits. So the limit from the negative, we're going to use the top one. So limit is x goes to two from the negative side is going to be of f of x equals three times two minus two, which three times two is six minus two is four. Then we can look at the limit as x approaches two from the positive side of f of x. We're just going to plug it in down here, so we get 2 squared, which is 4, so the limit exists. And it equals 4. Um, so the limit exists. Second, f of 2 has to exist. Well, one of our limits, it's a greater than or equal to. When it's an or equal to like that, that is also the function value there. So when you have a, a less than and a greater th than or equal to, or a less than or equal to and a greater than, if the limit exists, 
the function will also exist and be equal because it is one of them. So f of 2 equals 4. These two things are equal. So yes, it is continuous. Doesn't always happen that way. So here we're going to, we have basically the same setup. Notice this top one is going to be both the limit and f of negative 1. So we can look at the limit as x is approaching negative 1 from the negative of f of x. Just plug in negative 1, negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. And then, same thing for the positive. x is going to negative 1 from the positive direction of f of x. That's going to give us sine of negative pi. Sine of negative pi, we have to think back to the unit circle. Negative pi is going to be back to the 180 degrees backwards, um, which backwards, forwards, that one doesn't matter because sine will be 0. So these two guys are not equal, which means it's not continuous because the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x does not exist. So that would be the reason why. The function exists. That's the negative 1. So this would also be f of negative 1 but the limit itself does not exist. Um, another type that could be set up is one like this, where we have a not equal to and then an equal to. This one will be the limit, and this one will be f of 0. So here, as long as this is going to be a continuous deal, the limit will exist. Here, the function exists. Our goal is just to see if these two things are equal. So the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, e to the x is continuous, so we don't have to worry about one-sided so much. We can just substitute e to the 0, which is 1. Then f of 0 is 2. There's really no plugging in there. Um, these two things are not equal, so it's not continuous because the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x does not equal f of 0. And so that is how you could find the cont uh, continuity part. Um, there's one other way that these could be, um, you could have for the the uh, domain. That would be something like f of x equals blah, 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 whatever. Um, x is greater than 0, and x is less than 0. Notice there's no or equal to in this case. And so if you have something like that, you don't even need to really plug anything in. Because right from here, we can see that f of 0 um, does not exist. And so that fails the second. f of c has to exist, and then the two things have to be equal. So f of 0 in this case does not exist. It doesn't matter what the functions are here. Um, but that's another thing. That's a not a common thing. Um, that would be kind of a, almost trying to trick you thing. Um, the common ones are by far these guys where just one of them is going to be an or equal to. So that's how to tell if functions are continuous. Last thing we're going to look at with piecewise functions is we're going to make it continuous. So for this case, it'll say solve for 
A, solve for A and B, solve for K and C, solve for, we'll have a couple extra variables in order to make it continuous. And so if we have something like this, f of x equals 3x plus a, if x is less than 2, x squared, if x is greater than or equal to 2, um, what do we do? We are going to plug in this number into both of them and set them equal to each other. That's going to make it continuous, so we're going to solve for the missing variable. So to do this, we're going to have 3 times 2 plus a equals 2 squared. 3 times 2 is 6 plus a equals 2 squared is 4. Subtract 6, a equals negative 2. That's all there is to that. So we plug in the value, then we solve for the missing ones. Now it could get a little bit harder. We could have a couple harder things to plug in, or I like it when we get a couple different equations in our piecewise function. Um, this could happen to see, is it continuous? You do the same thing you did before, you just have to do it for negative one and for three. Um, but to make it continuous, we're going to plug negative 1 in to the top 2, set them equal to each other, and then we're going to plug 3 in to the bottom 2 and set them equal to each other. Um, we may end up having variables that um, just kind of go away, or we may end up having a system of equations. It's one of those other things that you've learned, and now it's just, hey, here, look, we're using it in a problem. Look at that. Weird. So first, let's plug in negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 cubed equals a times negative 1 plus b. So simplifying this, that's going to be negative 1 equals negative a plus b. We'll plug in 3 to the others. We'll have a times 3 plus b equals 3 squared. So... 3a plus b equals 9. System of equations. Um, we could substitute. We could do whatever we want. Um, we could or substitute or eliminate. It doesn't matter too much which we do. Um, it's set up almost for elimination, but we're going to go substitution. Let's say in um, this first one here, uh, add the a over, so b equals a minus 1. I'm just going to plug it in over here. 3a plus b, which is a minus 1, equals 9. 4a minus 1 equals 9, which means 4a equals 10, which means a, we can divide by 4, 10 fourths, reduce 5 halves. Plug that back in up here. B equals 5 halves minus 1. 1 is 2 halves. 5 halves minus 2 halves. B equals 3 halves. So we have our answer, A and B. And that will make it continuous. And so that's what we're looking at today. Um, just continuity in general, looking at are things continuous? Looking at a graph, where is it continuous? That's actually where is it discontinuous? Um, we could be looking at intervals. It's continuous from negative 3 to 5 um, because that's where the discontinuities happen. Um, and then mostly with piecewise functions. Is it continuous? If not, you have to know what those three pieces of that definition are um, and then make it continuous plug in the numbers, set them equal to each other, and that's it. So be working on problems, be asking questions, and happy mathing.